So I'm going to um, explain some aspects of relational modeling and I will address three aspects, namely cardinalities of relationships, model quality and uh, model flexibility. So let's let's start with um, with cardinalities. And as you remember, we have these uh, foreign keys. And um, the essence uh, of having a foreign key is that we are establishing a what is called a many uh, to one relationship. So let's let's take a look at, at the concrete example here. We have a student table, we have a department table, and we have a foreign key, yeah, a DID here, it's called in the student table that points from the student table to the department table. And um, uh, so the foreign key represents a many to one relationship, or if you just look at it from the other side, uh, also um, a one to many, yeah, so many to one and many the one to many is the same it's just the viewpoint uh, that you have yeah so one to many when looking from department many to one when looking from from student yeah from the student side um, and uh, this is uh, the, the 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 effect that we have a many here the a many side that um, that is the outcome or that is the uh, essence uh, or the consequence that um, that the foreign key must not be unique. And if you look at two at the records here at the student uh, in the student table, you see we have two student records uh, with number 100 and number 102. And both of them uh, have the same department ID. And therefore, these two students are connected to one department. That means that department, in this case, the MBAE department has to at these two students here. Yeah. Um, this um, if it is a, a mandatory or an optional relationship, that depends um, on the fact if uh, this um, foreign key must be ha has a not null constraint or if it has no, uh, no not null constraint. Yeah, so that depends on the definition here on the DID uh, column here, the foreign key column in the student table. If it has a not null constraint, then then each student must be must have some value in here, so must be related to one department. If if we won't have a not uh, null constraint, then it might be empty. Yeah. So of course, this having a not null or null uh, no not null constraint depends on your use case. Yeah. Sometimes it must be mandatory. I would say each student should be related to a department. Yeah. But sometimes uh, we we also might encounter data models where that is not, not the case, yeah. But sometimes we also encounter one-to-one uh, -one relationships. And um, this can handle it uh, in the following way, namely by having a combined foreign key plus plus a primary key. So if, if you look at, so we have, we have one table for persons and we have one table for ID cards. Yeah. And um, uh, so, so the ID card that should be uh, a specific kind of ID card, for example, your, your usual passport. Um, and then uh, uh, within the here, database, you, you should only allow to have one ID card, yeah, at, at, at specific in a specific point in time. And uh, then you see the, the, the ID card table has also a column called PID, and that's a foreign key to the PID uh, of um, table person. Yeah, But uh, in this case, since I have it underlined here, the foreign key is at the same time a primary key. And that means uh, the foreign key must be unique. And therefore, each um, yeah, so we can, we can only have one uh, record in the ID card table for each person in the person table. Yeah. So um, so, and in this case, because it's in a different table, for example, uh, we might have uh, person records here in that table where there is no 
uh, ID card record here that labels and that might um, um, might make sense for example in this case uh, the, if minors are not uh, must not have ID cards yeah so that that would be uh, totally okay person must not have ID cards yeah so this is a one-to-one -one. it's just a foreign key that at the same time is a primary key and then we have uh, many to many that that is something we have uh, encountered several times yeah during the the SQL statements that that we have built and as you remember we need an in-between table so if we take enrollment for example yeah it's a many-to-many -many relationship between a student and courses a student can be enrolled in many courses a course can have many students that are in, in enrolled within with it, it yeah and so we have this in between enrollment table here so if we look at the concrete example here we see we have the student table we have a course table here and then we have a combined primary key namely matriculation number and course id within the enrollment table and each of those parts here of the combined primary key are uh, foreign keys to the corresponding tables so if we look at the first record here we see student number one uh, no, student uh, with matriculation number uh, 100 uh, is for example enrolled in finance yeah and we see that also here 101 is enrolled in finance so finance has two enrollment as we see but we see that um uh, here Patil is uh, Mr. Patil is also in, enrolled in uh, two uh, 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 courses, namely in finance and in controlling, as you see. Yeah, so one course that has many students, one student here Patil that that has many courses, many to many. Yeah. Okay, so that's that just a refresher uh, how how data could be, um, yeah, connected, could be connected uh, within within a, in a larger database. So we have one to many, many to one, one to one, and many to many. These are the usual suspects, yeah, that you yeah, that you find in, within a database. Any questions to uh, to cardinalities? Then let's talk about model quality and uh, model quality uh, one, one thing that um, one problem that we might have and that that's as we have already discussed a usual um, thing that we find in spreadsheets uh, namely mixture of concepts yeah so um, and that is usually the reason why if a spreadsheet gets larger and larger in some point in time we would like to switch to, to a relational a database uh, so with, within uh, small spreadsheets a mixture of concept is uh, um, usually is useful because it gives you a better overview of the data but having mixture of concept within a relational a database or within a database in general uh, that's that that poses some problems and uh, i'm going to to discuss it with you which which kind of problems uh, we might encounter so first of all if you look at that table here yeah uh, we have uh, student and department the concept student and the concept department have been mixed for example uh, for the concept students yeah we have matriculation number and name and for the department concept we have department id and uh, also some kind of name of the department yeah um, so that's um, that that that's a mixture of concept that that we have here and um so what what are the usual uh, uh, problems that could could arise first of all we could have what is called an insert consistency so let's assume we in, we insert a new student let's say number 104 
and we give it a DID of 10 and we type in, because 10 is here MBAE, yeah, we type in, we would like to, we, we, we should have typed in MBAE, but we might have a typo, M-A-B-E, yeah, that might, might occur. So then we would have um, two records with the same department ID, but with different names. But be, uh, since uh, if we are searching yeah, in a spreadsheet uh, for MBAE, uh, we might not find this one here, this typo row here. Yeah? And if it's a larger one, we might miss it. Yeah? So that's, um, that's something that, that definitely could happen. And according to Murphy's law, it definitely will happen. The next thing is uh, deletion inconsistency. And what does it mean? That means, um, uh, so let, let's take a look at an example. If I, if I, um, if I delete uh, uh, number 103, so if I, if, I, if I delete that student record here, then I also delete any information on mechanical engineering. Yeah, so, um, since this is the last record here that, that, that carries information about department and, and so for example, in contrast, if I would, um, delete number 102 information on business computing would still be available because it's in 101. But if, if I then remove 101, then information about business computing is gone. Yeah. And this is. This is not systematic. Yeah, this is, is in what, what is called in database terms an anomaly. Uh, since uh, uh, deleting the last record that carries that the corresponding information here uh, also removes information about the second concept or, or the second concept that is uh, represented within the table. Yeah, and this is a strange behavior. Yeah, this is unexpected behavior. Yeah. Um, and of course, then, then that's a problem. Uh, this, that's the, um, that's the deletion, uh, consistency and, uh, oh, I forgot. We also have the update con inconsistency. That was the first one here, actually. And so if I update, uh, the department name of record in number in 100. Uh, two into business computing. So I take the record with the matriculation num with the matriculation number one hundred and two here, yeah. And I rename that column here, not being aware that there is some kind of dependency here, yeah. And then I get um, then I have um, uh, for the same department ID again in the same uh, kind. Uh, uh, as we have it with a with a typo here, I would have two different names. That would would be an inconsistency. Yeah, and the problem is of all of this is that functional dependencies are not regarded. So, um, what what does functional dependency mean? Actually, it's quite simple. It just means um, that I have some kind of primary key there. Namely, I would like to say uh, um, 10 is a primary key of the MBE department. And that means every record with department ID uh, 10 must have the name MBAE. Uh, in the same way for, for DID 20. Yeah, if it is a primary key, um, then, uh, then the name of the department, of course, depends on that primary key. and. Uh, we would not be allowed to have different values for the same primary key, of course. Yeah. So um, that that that's a problem here. Yeah. And of course, the solution here uh, for that this is something we already have seen, namely distributed onto different tables, and then everything is fine here. Yeah. So this 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 is something that you should should have in mind if you're looking at data at spreadsheet data it might have uh, this kind of problems here 
And even in, 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 in actual databases, if, if the designer has not um, designed it correctly or with quality in mind, maybe he has, he has just um, one by one mi migrated the Excel sheet into a, a database table, uh, then you might have uh, these problems there. Yeah? And uh, we have already talked about that. This is redundancy and with redundancy comes inconsistency and uh, so on. Yeah? Uh, a different kind of uh, quality issue is um, if you represent repeating concepts uh, within your table. Yeah? Um, so in a spreadsheet, you easily might, um, uh, you easily might represent your buildings uh, in the following way. You have, you have one row here per building so building ID number one, it's building A. And then you have a repeated, repeated set of columns for the room ID and the corresponding seats belonging to that room. So I have room ID one, for example, A001, it has 20 seats. Then I would have room ID two, seats two. And, oh yeah, unfortunately I have a typo here. Um, uh, room ID 100 here uh, and uh, uh, seats 100 yeah and so on and if if a if, if a room has less than uh, 100 seats you would just have no entry here in the remaining uh, uh, columns here yeah so um that's called a repeating concept because uh, the concept room is repeated here within that uh, structure yeah uh, this um, this representation poses uh, several problems. For example, we have uh, buildings might have different number of rooms. Yeah, so you have this uh, null values here that might not be uh, too bad. Yeah, but that is something that that, that happens here. Um, a more harder problem is uh, if you have a building with more than 100 rooms, okay, in a spreadsheet, you can just add a further, two further columns here, yeah, that if you have one more room, that's not um, not so problematic. Within a relational database, of course, you have to uh, add a column within the, in the table. Of course, it's also possible, yeah, but that needs some kind of coding um, and change within a running system, yeah. But uh, most important is, so if, if I, I would have here, have this table here within a relational database system, um, SQL would not be uh, applicable any longer, at least on some parts here of the data model. Of course, you, 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 you can apply SQL nevertheless, but um, some, some, um, some things uh, could not be solved with it anymore. Uh, for example, if you would like to find rooms with minimum number of seats, yeah, um, that is not possible uh, using SQL because SQL can filter rows and, and can count rows that are connected uh, to a different table, but SQL cannot um, handle columns. So, for example, if, would, if I would like to find a room with a minimum number of seats, um, I would like to find. Actually, this is not really possible to to build in um, in SQL. Uh, count the number of rooms per building. That also would not be possible. Yeah, but both of them would not be uh, directly possible. Yeah. Um, because uh, yeah, it, it there would be some way to do it, uh, but that would be quite complicated. Yeah. Um, so let me show you the, the the real data model for that, and then we can see uh, how easy it would be to solve these uh, problems here. Yeah. So uh, the correct uh, model for this one here uh, would be that you have a building table. With a building ID and a name, and then you have an, a room table. Yeah, this room table gets a, a a compound primary key, namely the building ID plus the room ID. Yeah, 
So taking one and A001 here, that would be the primary key of that room here because there might be different building that also have a room A001, yeah? But if they have a different building ID, that would be no problem, yeah? So therefore we have this com here compound um, uh, primary key here, and then we have the number of seats. So this, this would be the correct data model, yeah? So we have a one to many uh, relationship. First of all, arbitrary number of rooms can now be connected to any building because I just add a new room here, a new record here, and it points to the same building. No change of structure is necessary. It's just, it's just um, here, it's, it's just um, in, inserted yeah, in, into that table here. And uh, for example, if I would like to have um, uh, rooms with a minimum number of seats, or here it's a maximum, uh, sorry, also a typo here, uh, so I, if I would like to have all rooms that have less than uh, 14 uh, seats, yeah, it's just select star from room where seats uh, is greater or equal or uh, less uh, equal than 40, yeah. Um, and if you would like to, uh, sorry, if you would like to uh, count the number of rooms per building, it's just uh, take the room table here, group it by building ID and count the number. Of records here yeah so this kind of um, analytics here now would be easily uh, possible yeah um, nevertheless you find such kind of things in in uh, in real databases um, um, they might occur uh, the, the reason might be that they they might be advantage from a application programming point of view yeah uh, therefore, you might encounter such things, yeah. So it's not totally wrong to have it, yeah. But uh, with respect to analytics, um, if you encounter such kind of structures, you 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 immediately know that analytics might be problematic, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, model quality. So I have identified two main aspects, mixture of concepts and repeating concepts. Yeah? So and even if you're not, later on, you are not concerned with relational data model, if you look at uh, spreadsheets and you definitely will, encounter, will deal with spreadsheet, you, 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 you might encounter such kind of things. And then at least you know um, uh, what, uh, what is the essence or what is the characteristic of the data that you have in front of you. Yeah? I will not say that these quality issues uh, uh, are problematic in, in every situation. Yeah, often it's not, not really a problem, but being, being aware of them, I would say it's uh, yeah, some knowledge that you have. Okay, and now let's, um, let's talk about something completely different, but this is something that you um, encounter in ERP systems yeah in enterprise resource planning systems so the usual systems like sep and so on uh, salesforce or whatever uh, that you use in order to to uh, manage your data on an, on an enterprise level yeah and um, these kind of systems they must be flexible in the sense that different businesses uh, must be mappable yeah uh, on, on 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 their structures and since different businesses uh, have different kind of structures and different representations of thing yeah uh, you need um, some kind of model flexibility in order to handle that and uh, in the following slide i'm going to discuss what that means so um just by just looking at products yeah and um being from from global procurement uh, branch here yeah uh, all of you are aware of products and dealing with products yeah so um if you look at products from from a data point of view yeah that that's quite a heavy beast because um uh, we have different product categories 
uh, yeah, and, and these different uh, product categories have uh, different attributes. So, for example, if, if I'm talking about shoes, yeah, they might have a size, a fit, fabric of the sole, insole material, and so on. Yeah. If I talk about books, they have number of pages, language, cover material. Yeah. Or if I'm selling beds, yeah, I might have a size, yeah, uh, frame material. And uh, if I'm selling games, yeah, I have these ones. So the usual modeling that, that we have looked at up to now would not be a viable solution for that, for that because your product table would need description, color, wide, lens, size, uh, age level, yeah, for every kind of imaginable uh, product, yeah, you, 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 you have to insert the corresponding attributes. And of course, for a specific product, most of them would be empty. Yeah. And if, if you have a new kind of uh, product category uh, and that has a, a, a attribute that you haven't handled yet, yeah, you must, you must add a further column to the product table. Yeah. I think it's for all of you, it's immediately visible that that is not a viable solution for a, a, a ERP system to, to, to model products in, in that way. Yeah. So how can we deal with it? And um, the, the solution is that we have a complete different kind of model here. Yeah. Um, that has a complete uh, different uh, uh, characteristics yeah so that might look a little bit alien to you yeah so i i, I will um, go into it and we, i will also talk, talk about um, uh, i will make some examples uh, how you in which you can see by which you can see um, how that model works first of all but let, let's let's discuss it from an abstract point of view the product table itself now doesn't contain any columns for for attributes anymore and attributes attributes here like color and so on they have been column here in that model but they are no longer columns but they are now records by themselves so attribute there's there's a table called attribute yeah looks looks strange doesn't it uh, so but that's solution for that and then um in order to to deal with typing of values so we might have integer values string values and so on we need uh, some further table namely a value table and a type table in order to to model everything uh, correctly yeah so of course you see that that's easy to understand this is quite hard to understand and often you have this tension between understandability and flexibility Usually flexibility means more complex model, less understandability, but that, that's a price you have to pay. So if you look at a data model and for example, if you have to, in order to analyze data, you have to extract data from, from, from some kind of uh, systems, yeah, Navision, SAP, Salesforce, and so on. Um, be prepared to encounter such kind of tables here. So let's, take a closer look at how that works. Um, so here in the upper part, I have um, a product table here. Yeah. And um, so I have only, uh, let, let, let's let add a further column here. That doesn't work, uh, just a moment. Um, So dot 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 so that we are aware that we have many more columns would have many more columns here yeah so and let's let's assume I have a product uh, that's a, that's an alpine boot yeah it has a, a size uh, um, shoe size of 43 yeah let's see that's that's the European uh, shoe size here and the color is brown yeah so we have here we would have this size Column, yeah. By the way, size could mean different things for different product categories, of course, yeah. So you you would have many different size columns uh, here that that even might complicate that here, yeah. 
Uh, and then we have this color uh, attribute here, uh, brown. Yeah, so that's easy to understand for you. That's the common way how we have stored things uh, within a database. So now, now let's take a look here at our advanced model here. Um, so the product table now is um, only has uh, don't has any uh, any. Um, attributes anymore so we only have a description here yeah of course the product table would also have many more attributes like for example introduction date of that product product this this um, continuation date of the product and many more things that might be related uh, to the product itself yeah? packaging packaging instruction and, and whatever you can imagine that might be relevant uh, for 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 the product here yeah um, so that, now we have one record here and now um, let's maybe we should first take a, a look here at the value table and the value table is just uh, there in order to to talk about types so let's assume so i have only inserted two things here it, there might be the type integer there might be the, ta the type watcha for variable characters of course there might be the type date and the type string and so on yeah so there might be many more so that's the date table here and then now let's take let's take at the let, let's take a look at the table attribute and you see the attribute table is pointing to the type table and um, so let's take a look at the first record here on the attribute table and that should be the record the 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 the, the, the attribute size and you see the um, the uh, product and because the product id here in the um, in the in the attribute table it tells tells you to which product this attribute belongs and the product id is number one so size is related here to alpine boot and there's a second row here that's also related to alpine boot and that's color so um, this table states that um, that to the product id number one um, to actually we have two two attributes that are related to that yeah and here for example if we would have let's say we have a product number 12 and that would be a, a, a washing machine for example yeah then we might have uh, the the rotation per minutes yeah here uh, as as an as an attribute that that is related to that yeah so but it's not here in the uh, data it's just but but it should let let's do it might make sense here to have it here yeah so um, number 97 yeah no sorry not at 12 and that's the washing machine yeah so and it has one attribute so and if we look at the type here of the size for example the type of size with respect to alpine boots yeah that's an integer and the color uh, uh, of alpine boots with respect to alpine boots it's it's a vacha it's, it's, it's a string yeah and the rpm with respect to um, washing machine it's also has also the number one here so it's also um, integer yeah okay so um, now let, let's concentrate on the alpine boots we see alpine boots now has these two records here size and column like color yeah and now um, what value does it have and here the 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 value table yeah comes into place and the value table is uh, connected to the attribute table and it's connected to the type value table and for each value type that we have yeah and maybe we should really int value red value so let's let's insert uh, let let's really insert here some further 
rows here, yeah. Number three would be, for example, um, rational value. Let's call it here rational, or let let's call it decimal, yeah, for example, because in in uh, yeah, so the data type here would decimal, yeah, and um, and number four would be a string, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, string is varchar. Number four would be date. So, um, so the um, if we look at the value table here, and if we take a look here at the first record. So first of, we, before we look at the record, let let's see let let's recognize that each value record has in this case here four different slots for the four different kinds of values that we can insert but each record in each record only one slot is filled and that depends on the type yeah and if you look here at the oh the the um these were gone here just a moment Oh, sorry, sorry, just a moment. Um, no, sorry. No, it's correct. Um, so if we take a look at here at the first record, we see that it is related here um, to the attribute size, yeah, and we see it's uh, related here to the um, value type integer, yeah, and it has a value of forty three. And if we take a second record, uh, if we take a look at the second record here, we see it's also it's uh, here to the to the color because it has a value of two here and it's related to Vacha and the value is brown. Yeah. And now you see the same information here uh, that is here has now been reconstructed in a much more complicated way here. But uh, now we have, um, we can, uh, if, if we need a new kind of, of attribute. Yeah. So maybe let, let me ask you. So assume I, I got a new 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 product uh, category yeah and um, and I would I would need a new a new attribute so so what attribute should we introduce here into the system any any suggestion from your side what what we should introduce here which new category and which new attribute Any any ideas? It depends on the value type it has. Yeah, I just want first of all, I just wanted you to tell me an example. What what should we introduce now? So we, for example, we could have furniture, yeah, mm -hmm. as, as a new kind of thing. And what attribute? That we don't have here at the moment uh, would would be sensible for fun furniture date sorry date date no the, date, how date. It does it weigh weigh weight how many okay. kilograms how many kilograms oh, wait sorry yeah <laughs> yeah wait good idea yeah so so assume, yeah, we have um, we 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 have now um, we have now a, a, a new a new product here, yeah. Um, so let let me do the following in order to uh, let me copy it here over so that I have it next uh, semester still available. Just a moment, copy and um, 
so now now I have a copy, a fresh copy of it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so let let's assume uh, um, a share. Yeah. So that's a new product. So uh, share. Where where do I have where where do I have to put it? In PID with the product. First. Yeah. So let's assume we, we have now share, yeah, 113, and that's share, yeah. It's, uh, so we have no, the, the data model here doesn't comprise categories and so on, yeah. Um, so we just have a share here. So, and now um, the attribute uh, white we would like to have. What, what do we have to do? Add it in the attribute table. Yes. So we would have, let's say we have now many, many more other attributes we have already introduced. Yeah. Uh, let's let's say it's uh, thousand uh, one hundred twenty three. That's that's our new attribute here. So what do I have to input here? One hundred thirty. One hundred thirty. What do I have to insert here? Let's assume that that is uh, in in we have a we have a very small unit uh, grams yeah not kit kilogram but just gram decimal three uh, oh, oh, only kilogram then only maybe in Let, let's take kilogram take a kilogram is okay yeah it might be easier to handle yeah so which um, which type we would um, assign to it one. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, which which type? Digits, so it will be integers or decimal. Decimal, yeah. yeah. Since it, it has fractional numbers, yeah, it uh, makes sense to have it as a decimal. And the name is weight, yeah? So now we have, now we have um, this new uh, attribute. So, and you see, we don't have changed our data model in any way. It's just, um, it's just data management. So for example, for, if, if we have, if we are look, looking into the procurement department, there could be persons who are dealing with what is called master, master data, and they could be, have the, have the responsibility to, to uh, insert new um, master data, for example, new attributes, new, new product categories, and so on. Yeah, but this doesn't require any change of the system. It's just um, that you have corresponding uh, master data tables that you are managing. So and now let's let's assume um, uh, our share has is uh, two kilograms, has a weight of two kilograms, or let's say of two point three kilograms. So how, how, how to deal with that? We have to add that in the value table. Yes. So value table, yeah. So we have a new value. It's just a number here, yeah. It's just counting here. So what do we have to insert here? One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. What do we have to insert here? Three. The three because the decimal. And now, two point three as a as a weight. It's rational value. Yeah. Two point three. Yeah. Yeah. You see it. Okay. So I think uh, I hope you got the idea behind that here. Uh, yeah. That that that's needed. Actually. Actually, that's. Um, this model here, this model here is uh, is uh, quite a simplification of what what we find in real <laughs> database in real ERP systems. Yeah, so let let me give you a glimpse on what uh, we might encounter there. Just a moment. Um, um, Just a moment here. So, 
So there's also a snippet of a real uh, data model. Yeah, it's just for you to 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 impress you. <laughs> what what could there be available? Yeah. Um, uh, so here I have the product table yeah, here and here you find it's called feature. It's not attribute. It's called feature. Yeah. Um, and here you find the value and you find the feature type. So this is something that that is analogous to what we have uh, seen here. Yeah. But it's much more elaborated. Yeah. We could talk about value list from which we can select and many, many things more. We can talk about categorization. Yeah. And that even that here is only only a small part of, of a real product uh, data model that you encounter in, um, in, in, in ERP systems. Yeah. OK, so now uh, you, you understand um, um, if you need data from the IT department and they have to extract it from 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 the uh, ERP systems, yeah, that might take some time in order to find the correct uh, tables. Yeah, they have thousands of tables uh, within such kind of system. Okay, so that's um, uh, that's about flexibility now. Yeah. So one one last thing, and now I would like I would like to do in order to to deal with um, uh, product uh, with, with this um, uh, data modeling uh, stuff is once again um, dealing um, so turning a, a, a given spreadsheet into a relational data model. Yeah. So that that's um, that's something as I have already explained that that happens all the time that within the company you are using an Excel sheet and the Excel sheet gets un unhandy and you would like to turn it into a relational database yeah and um, and you already we have already seen it in, in the room room management example yeah that uh, this kind of um, transformation from from a relational from from excel sheet into a relational database is it's usually not an easy way to do and it's not not just a one to one kind of uh, tr transformation but uh, requires some thinking yeah, about it and um so let's take a look at this uh, sheet here yeah let's assume that was a small a very small business and they have uh, uh, stored their their orders and so within an Excel sheet, yeah. Of course, it was really a small enterprise here, it's a small company, yeah. But it started in that might might have started in that way. So let's let's take a look at what we have here. So first of all, this 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 Excel sheet here is talking about orders. And um, if you take a look closer look at it, you see that um, that that this thing here actually is um, one order. This this is one order. Yeah, so maybe I can, uh, let's do it in the following way. Take that one here and that one. So let's take a look at it here. So it has an order number, as you see. It has an order date. That's, of course, relevant for an order. Then we have the information about the customer. That is referring to that number here. Then um, we have the order items. So there's there's a pen that have been or has been ordered, a rubber and a marker. So three products are on this order here, as you see. And we have ordered three pens, one rubber, one marker. And we have a unit price of these things. And then we have a price, unit price times quantity. And of course, we have a total of the, of the, over the whole order. Yeah. And that's... Um, so we have several orders here yeah and, and you see all of them are, are stored here in that way and of course we have the usual problems for example one miller one miller yeah we have this functional dependency here um, that that might be violated later on yeah if it gets larger yeah 
Um, but we have one, one further complication here, namely that prices might change. And uh, so using a spreadsheet, it's no problem. Just, um, just uh, uh, ha have some information when price changes happened. For example, uh, on June 1, scissors, uh, the, the price of scissors changed. And if you look, for example, here in May 10, we have scissor here and you see scissor were uh, $4.50. Uh, $4 yeah. But um, June 1, starting June 1, we should use uh, 470. Yeah. And let's take uh, so, uh, so here in July 21, the scissor has been sold and it has been done correctly. Yeah. But you can assume that you easily can make mistakes here. Yeah. If you, if you store that way. Yeah. And we have this total. Uh, so we have some also some calculations in it here. Yeah. Uh, quantity times unit price. This is this one here. Actually, this is some kind of derived information. Yeah. Um, and the overall total, of course, is also some kind of, of derived information. Yeah. But as it is, I, I think it's uh, quite easy for you to, uh, to understand uh, how, how uh, orders are stored here within that uh, uh, spreadsheet. Yeah. Are there, are there any questions with respect to the spreadsheet? Or is it clear to you? Hello. Yeah. Professor, could you please explain again about the price changes? Yeah. So um, within the Excel sheet, uh, so the strategy is just um, uh, store, take take your product. So let, let's assume market changed at you July 1 again. Then I would add here further July 1, and then would, I would put for marker a new uh, value in it here. So. One thing is that you that you have changed that you that you have the current price here that you see what is the current price here and if you add a new um, order you you look at your price table and you, you can insert the correct price here that is um, that that is in effect uh, during the in, in the corresponding point in time. Okay, means you are suggesting that uh, we have to link uh, this bottom column. A table with the unit price one. Yeah, yeah, that is something that you can do. That 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 would perfectly make sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but of course you would like to have the history, so uh, um, you you have to to connect it to the correct price at the correct date. Yeah. So, for example. Uh, only this one here, the scissor here in, in, in line 14 here should be uh, related to that one. Uh, of course, I should also have the 450, uh, 450 here for, for scissor before that. Yeah, that, that should also have been here in the spreadsheet, of course. Yeah, uh, in order to link it to that. Yeah, okay. Everything clear so far? No, no further questions. So now uh, let's take a look at the relational data model and that again is completely different uh, than, than, than the, the spreadsheet. Uh, before going into the relational model, I would like you to show one tool that we are later on um, going to use um, if you're talking about business intelligence and actually it will also be uh, used within the uh, written exam yeah so uh, i would just just like you to give you a first introduction to that um, and uh, on my website yeah uh, i have this um, section on software so i will put it in the chat here Yeah, please go to, to my website. And there uh, we have a web based software that's called uh, uh, UML ET INO. Yeah, and if you click here on that link, you are entering a drawing application. 
Yeah. Have you been able to follow? Or there are yes, any professor? So, uh, so if you have any problem, just tell me. Otherwise, I, I assume you have been able to follow. Yeah. So and now, so if I take, for example, this simple class here, this box here, and drag it here into the pane, yeah. Um, then then it's drawn here, and then you have this property uh, section here, and then for example, we can say customer, yeah. Then I can draw two minus. I can insert two minus signs here, yeah. And then I can say customer ID, for example, and name. And if I enlarge it here a little bit, you see a perfect customer table. Yeah. So drag it, click in, insert it, and adjust the size here. So if I take simple class again, and I call it order, yeah order id and let's see let's say customer id um fk foreign key yeah and then i can draw an arrow i put it over here and i put it over here and then you see i can drag it as i like and so i have a quite easy way to to draw a, a, a relation data model yeah have you been able to create the customer table emilio does it work yeah it's working professor could you please show the arrow once again yeah the arrow is it's just uh, let's let, let's remove it yeah i have on the right hand side here you see there are different kinds of errors yeah I, I take this one here this is this standard area uh, arrow and I double click on it if I double click on it you see it is here within uh, so I can just move it around here yeah and then I can connect the endpoint here yeah and here we are yeah do you see it Yes, yes. And then, um, for example, you can export it. Here's an export button. And uh, not export to Dropbox, uh, um, file export, sorry. Yeah. And then you, for example, you can save it as an image file. Yeah. And uh, later on, uh, insert it into your document or whatever. No, that, 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 that's easily possible. Yeah. Uh, to do so if I so I can now um, I can uh, save it yeah directly or I can open it with a with a with a viewer here yeah and you see here yeah you see I have drawn it here and now it's available here as a PNG file yeah Okay, so quite easy to use and might be useful also for other kinds of things that you would like to draw. Yeah. Um, and later on, uh, we are going uh, to use it uh, to, for example, to draw a business intelligence uh, star schema. Yeah. Uh, this, this is something that will come later on. So let's, um, let's uh, go back here to the Let's go back here. And you see, actually, I've drawn it here with that tool. Yeah. OK. Um, so it's not important for today that you're be, being able to, to draw with that tool. Yeah, I just wanted to give you a first introduction to it. And I will repeat it um, later on in the next lectures, how to use it. Yeah. Um, so let's um, let's understand how how this um, data model works, and and something that that you should have learned by now is um, that you have to identify concepts and how concepts 
are related um, to each other. And that, that, that's actually the essence when, when, when building a relational data model. Yeah. And if you look here at, at that um, Excel sheet here, yeah, uh, actually there are embodied many different concepts, actually six of them, because I have six tables here um, in, my, in my relational model. So let's, let's take a look at the first concept that, that's quite easy to understand, customer. We have the concept customer here. And uh, if you look at the spreadsheet here, uh, we can identify which, which um, columns here belong to the concept customer. And in this case, it, it's a customer number and it's a name. Yeah. So I have called it CID here and I have called it name here. Yeah. And I have the table customer. Then we have, for example, the, the product table. Yeah. Um, and um, so we also have the, the concept product. And now the, the important question is uh, which uh, elements of the spreadsheet belong to product. Of course, we need some kind of product ID. So when turning a spreadsheet into a relational database, we need all kind of, uh, we, we always need these uh, primary keys. Either they are already there here for, for customer, it was already there. Or if, if there is no, it's not mentioned, you have, you have introduced an, an artificial, a new um, a primary key column here. And this is, has to be done for product. And product, of course, has a description like pen and rubber. Yeah. So you might now um, ask the question, why, why we do not, why we do not um, put price into the product table? What do you think? Why, why, why we don't put price into the product table? Why doesn't price belong to the product directly? Because each product has a different price, right? Yeah, because we have um, in different dates, we might have different prices. So prices are getting, uh, are, are becoming a concept on their own, yeah? Of course, doing such kind of model that that's, that requires uh, some experience to understand what, uh, especially to identify such more abstract concepts, yeah, product, customer, and order, and so on. That that's quite easy to to figure out, yeah. But that price gets its own concept that depends here on the on the context, of course, yeah. And um, and actually, there's some some further concept that that is even not mentioned directly here. That's namely that's price list, and so we have a price list. They have a valid from and a valid to date, and the price now belongs to a price list and be, and refers to a product. Yeah. So that's that's our way of talking to talk about uh, price lists. Yeah. So um, and, and and talk about prices. Yeah. So one con uh, or two concepts that are still missing is the, the order itself and, and um, the order item. So uh, since an order could have many products in it, um, we, we identify a, 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 a relationship between products and orders. And actually, that's a many-to-many -many relationship, as we know because the same product could be ordered in, many, in different orders, yeah? Um, and one order can have, can contain many products. So um, order item gets its own concept that actually that's a many-to-many -many relationship between order and uh, product, yeah? And of course the order itself gets a concept, yeah? It has an order date and so on. And uh, combining everything here, we, we, um, we get our our uh, model here, yeah. That 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 could be uh, that could is able to represent it, yeah. And maybe we should try a little bit, yeah, uh, with playing playing with it, yeah. So let's first of all, uh, so so having that having uh, this model here, the next step now is turning this data into data with respect to that model. And that means we have to fill the different tables. So let's start with the customer table. Yeah. So 
so let's stay, let let let's start with the customer table. So we see we have two columns. And what data should be in the customer table? Just taking the data out of the spreadsheet. So what 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 do I have to do? So now I have to insert here a, a, a table, yeah, uh, with data. So maybe I start with the first one here in order to to start up everything, yeah. So I I put one and then Miller. How do I have to proceed? Two brown. Next one. Three Johnson. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Four Williams. Johnson and uh, and four Williams. Yeah. Here we are. Oh, that's all wrong. Four. Here we are. Here is the customer table. So let's go ahead with the order table. Okay, it's your turn. Uh, so, first uh, pin. Order one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's start. Let let's just take one order. Yeah, that that should be enough here. Okay. So let's take order number one. And then it would be May 1st, 2018. May 1st, 2018. And then we take the customer foreign key, right? Right. It would be Miller. Yes. So which, which what, what I have to insert? Uh, so one, right? Correct. That's right. Now we see the order of Miller, yeah? That's the order that belongs to Miller. So let's um, let's insert um, let's insert uh, let's let's create a product table. Volunteers first. So the product ID has has now been uh, devised. They they has to be generated. Yeah, that that that's a new column that's not in this Excel sheet. So we just generated one pen. One pen. Second rubber. Two rubber. One. Three marker, yeah. Envelope. And dot dot Yeah. Okay, that that's now product table, yeah. So now let's um, build our uh, order item. So we'll go with one. So we we will go with uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. The order ID, then yeah. the product ID, which is one as well in this one. Yes. Um, but it's also two and three, right? Yeah, but let's now stick to order item one. Okay. What What is missing? So it should be one as well, because it's a pen, right? Three, three, quantity. Here we have the quantity. So this one is order one, this one is a pen, and this one is a quantity. Yeah. Order ID, product ID, quantity. You see it? Yeah, professor. Next. One. Yeah. Two. Yeah. One. Yeah. 
then one three one then uh, two so let's add here the two yeah mm, yeah two uh, may 10 uh, 2018 may 10 2018 and two number two customer number two mm. and then two yeah four 20. that's the envelope and 20 yeah then uh two we, need, uh, we have to add that scissor fifth one scissor so five uh, five scissor yeah so two two five one one scissor and then we need a marker yeah marker is there professor on the third thank you so it should be two three one then right two then we have marker a three and we have ordered one marker yeah so okay now we have the the order item and now we have to um, we have to take a look at the prices yeah so now i have to rearrange a little bit here yeah um let's make a copy here um so i will make it a little bit smaller here yeah and then So here we are. Okay, now let's talk about, um, let's first uh, uh, create a price list. Yeah. Let's first create a price list. So, um, price list price product here we have the product so let's let's put the price list here yeah uh, price list so how to deal with price list now that that's also a custom situation um, that implicitly the prices here for pens at, at before June first, yeah, there, there also were prices, of course, but for whatever reason they are not stored here. But nevertheless, we would need a price list, yeah, and we would say it's valid from from the beginning of time. Let's say, yeah, let's say from um, uh, from uh, uh, January one um uh, let's say the business started at 2000 yeah and that's valid until so until one until when is it valid the first price list that that is implicitly here in the data that's one 2018 sorry Some maybe june, maybe june 1 2018 that's uh nearly correct <laughs> so uh june one is starting the new price list isn't it yes so until when should be the price yeah list? okay you got that's it me. yeah you got it yeah 2018 and then we have number two 
and now we have June 1, no? June 1, 2018. And um, so now we can represent infinity here. There, there are different ways to do it, either with a null value, or often you find uh, it in the following way, uh, December 31, uh, 2099, or something like that. Yeah? Meaning that the current price list is, um, is valid until infinity. And as soon as you introduce a third price list, uh, you have to change this ending date here. Yeah, that, that would be the logic behind it. But for the moment, uh, for the time being, we, we, we don't have it. Yeah. So now let's attach a price to our products. So let's, um, uh, so, so we have the price table here. I'll just let me make some space here. Professor, I have a question. Yeah. So the price list would be applied to the order, right? Because it depends on the order date. Um, yeah. So one thing is that that the price list is is there as some kind of information, some kind of data. And the second thing is how if, if if we if we insert a new order how how price calculation takes place and that takes place by means of sql because you are uh, so I, I will do it in a moment yeah guillermo just just, yeah. just a few minutes and then and i will come back to that so okay. now let's um now let's deal with prices here yeah let's deal with prices and yeah so what? So so we will not uh, construct the complete price list here. Just just to so let let let's just uh, talk about um, so let's let's talk about uh, so we have the scissor here. Uh, the scissor is uh, unfortunately um, okay. Let's talk about the pen for the time being. So what what is the price? Um, so what is the price? Uh, what 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 entries do we have for pen? So price has three columns as you, as you see. So we have the price list ID. So which price list does pen belong? Mm, one. Yeah. One, one. It's a product ID. Yeah. And the unit price uh, would be. The, and the unit price oh, is. 2.30. 2.30. So that's our pen. Yeah. And then um, let's talk about the scissor. Let's talk about scissor. How many entries do we have for scissor? Two entries. Two entries, that's correct. So what is the first entry for scissor? Um, an ID the one, uh, one oh. five, four point five zero. That's it, because uh, professor, could you explain it again? I don't yeah. understand this part. Yeah. So you see the price for scissors was 440 until uh, June 1. Then it changed to 470. Yeah? Yes. So um, on the first price list, so, so the price of scissor changed. And so if we look at, at the price table, so we, we talk about which price list this price belongs to, which product it is referring to, and what is the value. And for price list number one, which was valid in the past, the scissor has a price of 450. Yeah, got it. Miss, yes. If we wrote there two, then uh, it might be two, five, and four point uh, seven zero, isn't it? That's it. You got it. Okay. 
you see it? So, and for example, if you have a specific uh, point, let, let's say you, you are now creating a new um, order. Then you have just to look which price list is valid and take the price of that price list. Yeah. And if a product is not on that price list, you have to look at the price list before. So there are different different possibilities. Either you you do it that way as I have done it here, or you do it in the following way. And this, that is something that might be more sensible. Oops, that, that might be some, that, that is more sensible. How can I add a new line uh, that way? So it would be better to have it that way. Yeah, and yeah, let it even do it in the following way, just a moment. Yeah, so usually, usually it makes sense to have all products th that the price list always is complete so that you only have to look at one price list. Yeah. So if a price doesn't change, uh, the, 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 the pen here gets also into the second price list, but with this unchanged value. Yeah. So you always should have a complete set of prices per price list. That is one, one way to do it. Yeah. Could be done other, another way, but this is how, how it is done. Okay. Did you got it? Any yes. doubts? Any questions? <clears throat> now, Professor, we have to devise the uh, price list table. Uh, mm -hmm. Here, uh, it's not mentioned like which from which exact date uh, does the price change. So, how do we know that? Yeah, in some way you have to figure it out. Yeah. It, usually, if if you turn a spreadsheet into a relational database, you might encounter problems that that specific information is not available. Then you have have to handle it in some way. In this case, actually, we do not know when when, when the business started, so we have to just uh, invented here one date. Okay. Yeah. And and from a practical point of view, uh, if if you're introducing such new database and, and such new data, and you migrate it from 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 old data, uh, you you have to do a thorough analysis beforehand to see if uh, what what is available, what is not available, yeah, what could be done, uh, and so on. If if you are pursuing certain goals in in order to assess if these goals could be reached, for example, no. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so actually playing here in that way was just and, and dealing with these different aspects of data was just to actually to, to, to foster some some understanding of, of data, how data could be structured. Yeah. So I'm not assuming that you are going to build real databases. Maybe some of you might, but <laughs> I assume most of you not. Yeah, but um, the point here is to 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 gain a solid understanding when we talk about data, and that if you are encounter IT people and they tell you something about something, yeah, uh, you can uh, you got a better understanding. Okay, any further questions here? Then it's now time, definitely time for a break. Yeah, we will meet. Uh, in, in, in 50, we will meet back in, in, in 50 minutes. Yeah. See you.